Over the years in a workshop you will add more and more tools to your tool collection and they all have one problem in common. Because I can see more power cords than tools here and I want to change that. The easiest way probably would be to upgrade everything to Festool because they have their nice plug-in system but I really can't afford that by far. So I try to make a kind of plug-in quick connection system myself. The only problem there is that the market for these quick connectors is pretty small and I really only could find one that suited. And the ones I bought are the Neutrik Powercon True 1 connectors. And that's how they work. Pretty simple. A little long when they are connected, but as I said, these were the only ones that I could find. And of course I bought enough to put one on all the machines that I had on the table. Now to install these I of course have to open up all the tools and remove the old power cords and I'm doing that that way because if it turns out to not work I can't put them to original state so I also won't throw away the original power cords. Now a new little piece of cord and I'm putting some ferrules over the ends and now I can already put them in place. Power tools usually have some kind of rubber sleeve at the end that extends a little bit, but I want to mount the connectors right behind here, so there's no space for the rubber sleeve. But if I mount it just like so, then it's a little open here at the end. So to take up that space a little bit, I made this little wooden sleeve or at least the front part of the rubber sleeve out of wood and this fits here and now it doesn't fit at all that's not good now after changing the shape a little bit how it fits Okay, now installing a plug on this end. I had to unscrew it again and put these parts on the cord first. But now it's pretty much already done. This one goes on like so. And that's it. I quickly wired up the mating plug to the old power cord of the Dremel and it works. And I'll probably come back and make this a little bit longer so I can bend it all the way but the principle on installing these is super simple. I think this or a little bit more is the amount of flexibility I want for all the tools. Yeah, so now just doing that 10 times again. That will probably take a while. And that's how it looks inside this jigsaw. Good joke mechanism for the action. I also changed my strategy on figuring out the right cable length. So I first mounted it to the long one and now with the tool open I can see that it needs to be about this long. The circular saw was very easy, but now the hammer drill, quite complicated. The wires go here, under the switch, and then from this side into the switch. Well, that took a bit longer, but not as difficult as expected. This rod again was pretty simple, because I only had to take off this little cover here at the handle. And I also left the rubber sleeve in place, because it's pretty big, has a complex shape, 
but is also pretty short, so it's okay as it is. But now this shoulder is again complicated because everything is pretty much covered under here. The wires also have different lengths and this one needs a connector. Sometimes it's amazing how minimalistic these tools are. This little sander for example, motor, sanding pad, that's it. Now the Dewalt sander, it just looks like it belongs there. It fits their color scheme just perfectly. On this sander, the rubber sleeve in the back is ridiculously long. Why would you need that? The good thing on this sander is that it's not enough to just take off this cap. I have to open up the whole thing. And why is this good? Well, now we can see more of the inside of such a sander. But that was less exciting than I thought it would be. Well, most of the mechanism is inside this casting. So yeah, here's just a motor. One cool feature of this sander is also that it dampens the vibration and that really works. It's amazing. And it's realized with just foam pads on all sides. But it also only works on the high settings, so the high RPMs, dial on 5 or 6. And that's where you use it for wood. In the lowest settings, so 4, 3, 4, 1, the low RPMs, there it vibrates quite hard. But for wood you only use it in the high RPMs and there, yeah, there's pretty much no vibration. It's super comfortable to use. And all that's needed is the right kind of foam pads. That's pretty cool. Oh dear. This drill will be another challenge. Well, I think this drill won't be part of my system because I just can't open the switch. I can open it halfway, but then the trigger blocks me from opening it all the way. And I, there's no way I can get off the trigger. So, yeah, I leave it like it is for now. If any of you has already opened this exact drill and can tell me where the trick is, please let me know. But it still works. The angle grinder was relatively simple again and you think you switch it on in the front? No, you switch it on in the back. Now I've got all the tools equipped with this plug, except for this drill. And now you can also see the beauty of all these tools. And here are all the old power cords. Now it's time to make the new power cords with the mating plug. Therefore I bought 20 meters of good quality rubber sleeved cable. It's also important that I use the right plugs for the power cords because the ones I put on the tools have the contacts open and I can touch them. I shouldn't do that with the power cord that's plugged into the wall. This one, there the contacts are protected, there's no way to touch those. Now installing the plug is basically the same as with the other ones with the only change that here I also wire up the earth wire. Even though none of my current tools uses it, but maybe I add a tool in the future that needs it. And it's also no additional effort. The other end gets a regular wall plug. For now I made 5 power cords, 3 are 3 meter long, 2 are 5 meter long, so I hope I never have to curse about a not long enough cable anymore. Also one of both links I made with an angled wall plug and I also got three of the tool plugs left over so who knows maybe some future tools. The idea now is to have the tools that I use most frequently on the wall that would have been impossible with all the cords still attached and to have the power cords always plugged into the wall, three at the moment. And when I need to use, for example, the sander, I just grab it from the wall, grab a cord, plug it in, and I can start working. When I'm done, just put that away, put the tool away. It couldn't be simpler than that. So, 
Yeah. That's the idea of that. Now, I do say that this was not a cheap upgrade because all the connectors I bought cost about 100 euros and the cable plus little connectors were about 30 euros. But I think it's worth the convenience. And of course, I bought enough to hook up all 